Hey y'all, it's Robin. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing the giving book tag, which was created by Elle from Elia Brooks. So Elle created a amazing tag. I think it was the last year called the giving book tag and it has 10 questions and all of them have the word giving in it. This year she has a link to charity called the Phoenix Rescue Mission. I will have all of the information linked down below where you can go donate or watch her video and she will be donating the AdSense to that charity. If you have not checked out her video or her channel, definitely go do that down below. And we're just gonna get right into the tag. Question number one is, what's a book that you would give anyone if you could? Every year, Elle says that she would give them whatever book <laughs> they would want. And that's kind of how I felt about this question too. I was like, I don't know if I wanna push my own personal favorites on anyone, but I did grab two books that are two books that I consider some of my favorites. And they're probably gonna come as a huge shock because neither of them are romance. <laughs> they're actually both sci-fi which is really really outside my norm but the book that I consider like my favorite book of all time is actually Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. This is just such a comfort read for me. It was one of the books that like got me back into reading and one of the books that got me into audiobooks and this is a book that I will return to often which is very rare for me but I've read this three or four times now which is really weird. I never reread books but this is a book that I will reread if I'm just feeling really slumpy or something like that, like I will, I'll pick this up. So this is definitely a book I would give to somebody just because it means so much to me. But I also know that a lot of people hate this book. So I feel weird just giving it to anybody. But if you, if you like sci-fi, if you like 80s movie references, if you like just fun action-packed books, or if you like Will Wheaton who does narrate this book, Definitely check this one out. The other book that I would give anyone is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this is a book that I just, I still think about. I've read this book, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago at this point. And I think about this book monthly, like all the time. Lives rent-free in my head. I don't even really know how to describe it I without giving anything away. Essentially, you are following these main characters who are at this school and they are being groomed for something and that's all I really want to say they they can't really go out into the world they're very isolated at this school and then they take this trip and they start uncovering some secrets it's sci-fi it has a lot of exploration about morality and what does it mean to be human and this book is beautifully written this is like a modern classic but if you haven't if you haven't picked this up I highly recommend it so these are the two books that I would give to people one because it's my favorite and one because I think everyone should read it. So that's that's what I'm going to go with for question number one. Question number two is what's a book you couldn't give a rat's ass about? Elle doesn't swear on our channel so the question is technically what's a book you don't give a rat's hiney about but I'll, I'll swear on here. And I couldn't come up with just like one book which sounds terrible, but I ended up going with like a series or like author sort of answer. So first up is anything by Cassandra Clare. There are so many books in whatever that mortal instruments world is, and I am never, I'm never going to go back and read those. Like, I just, I won't. The second one is Holly Black, which is really weird because I love vampires and fae, but for some reason, there's something about Holly Black books that just do not call out to me. And I don't know what it is. Even she's releasing a new adult book. And even that one, every time I read the synopsis, I'm just like, I don't, I don't care. There are other ones that are on this list that I could think of like um, Crave, which is really popular right now, which is another vampire series. I'm never going to read that. Anything by Jay Kristoff. No, thank you. So those are, those are a bunch of answers for books I couldn't give a rat's ass about. Question number three is, given that the holidays are coming up, what's a book you hope someone buys for you? These, these gift questions are kind of hard because I actually buy all of my books myself. I am very rarely given books. Um, every Christmas, like my parents will give me like a couple of books. So this year, some of the books that I have on my Amazon wish list are actually some of my missing Jennifer R. Armentrout books. These are books that I am slowly collecting as I see them like go on sale on Amazon or like find them at Barnes Noble. This one is a copy that I found at Barnes Noble that I snagged because it was actually signed. And I'm hoping to get some of these for Christmas because I have a hard time 
buying books like this that I've, I've already read. I own in some other format. I own, I think, all of these on audio, but I really want them all on my shelf. I'm, like I said, I'm slowly collecting. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get some of these missing JLA books. Question number four is, what is a book or series that you've given up on? And I have two answers for this, and they are both going to hurt. So brace yourself. So we're going to start with an author that I think I have officially broken up with because I am breaking up with two of her series, and that is Lee Bardugo. I read the this series. This was, what, the Grishaverse series? And I actually really love this series. This first series, I really like. However, I DNF'd Six of Crows because I really, I really didn't like it. And then... I read Ninth House, and I think I'm DNFing Ninth House as well. I originally, when I read Ninth House, I read it last October, so that would have been October of 2020. And I did give it, I think I gave it like three, three and a half stars, and I did say that I was going to continue on, but it has now been, what, a year and something, and I don't know what, when the next book is coming out, and I will not go back and reread Ninth House. So I, I think I'm done with the series. I just don't know if Lee Bardugo is for me. So as of right now, I think I think I am giving up on Lee Bardugo books, but it could be persuaded in the future if a synopsis calls out to me. The next one is the one that I think is going to hurt the most people, um, but that is Brandon Sanderson and the Mistborn series, um, possibly all of Brandon Sanderson. I read Warbreaker and I loved Warbreaker a lot. And then I read this book and I really liked this book as well, but I have tried to read Well of Ascension, I think three times now and I get like 25% to 30% in and I just I can't I can't keep I can't keep pushing through I own I own this whole series it's sitting up on my shelf up there um maybe one day I guess but I there are just so many books in this world and I cannot I cannot get myself to commit to thousand page books it's just that's too much. I also did read um, Skyward and I really didn't like Skyward. I DNF'd it, did not like that at all. So yeah, definitely think I am breaking up with the Mistborn series and possibly all of Brandon Sanderson. And deeply sorry to Elle because I'm doing her tag and I'm talking about how I'm giving up on her favorite series of all time. So sorry, Elle. Question number five is what's a character you wish an author would give more time to? And for this, I actually went with Jack from Where Dreams Descend by Janelle Angelis. I talked about this in my review for this. Um, actually, I think I talked about it in my review for the second book of When Night Breaks. If I can remember what video that is in, I will link it up above here. Jack is a character that we meet in book one. And I loved his character throughout the entire series. And I thought he was going to play a bigger role. And he just doesn't. He just, he gets the worst end of the deal in the series. Like, you don't, you get like all of these glimpses of his, his past and stuff like that. And then at the end, he's just kind of left hanging. And I don't know if you were supposed to like not be rooting for him. But y'all, I was rooting for Jack through this whole series. And he just, he didn't get a good ending. I'm really hoping that Janelle Angelis returns to this world and gives us a story for Jack because that poor guy, I really wish he had got more time. He was probably my favorite character in here. And this leads me right into the next question, which is question six, what's a character you wish an author would give less time to? And I have two answers again for this, but the first one is the hero from this book who I am literally DeMarco. I forgot his name. I wish DeMarco had gotten less time. I just, I liked DeMarco in this first book, but in the second book, I just, I didn't, I didn't really care about his character at all. And I felt like more time was spent on DeMarco's character that like just wasn't necessary and it wasn't really developing the relationship and bond and stuff like that. It was just kind of like random stuff about his past that didn't really need to be there. We could have got more Jack instead. So that's questions five and six. But I do have another answer for question number six. And that is actually Poppy from the from Blood and Ash series, which sounds weird because she's the main character. But there is so much time spent on Poppy. 
and like not enough character arc to her somehow. Like you get so many pages of Poppy and yet I feel like Poppy is the most boring heroine. <laughs> I feel like all I've done in this video and this tag is complain about books. So hopefully I have something that I can gush about soon. But yeah, I just, I, I don't care that much about Poppy and I feel like we get so much of her in this book. And going back to question five, I wish we got more of Kyrian. So I guess for both of these series, which are both black and red books, there's a character that I wish we got more of and a character I wish we got less of. So that's, that's questions five and six. Question number seven is if you had to give up almost all of your books, which ones would you keep? This was a really hard question for me and not probably for the reasons that you think, but I don't own many like special edition books. I love all of my books and I don't want to get rid of them. And there are ones that I would absolutely want to keep, like that copy of The Starless Sea. I also have a signed edition of Clara and the Sun, like a special signed edition. But I don't own that many editions that I couldn't easily replace. Like that that's kind of what it comes down to is I, there's not many books that I own that couldn't be easily replaced. So I actually just grabbed three sentimental books. So if I were having to give up all of my books, the ones that I actually would probably grab first are these three sentimental books. The first one is this really, really dingy copy of The Great Gatsby. And the reason I would not get rid of this is this is actually the original copy that I read in high school. So you can see like, there's like my room number <laughs> and stuff in here. It is falling apart. But this is, I just have sentimental attachment to this book. Um, my AP English teacher actually let me keep this because I loved this book so much. I read it twice that year and I have actually reread this copy multiple times since then as well. It's just, it's my favorite classic. This costs a whopping $3.95. So um, yeah, I would keep this not for, not for the monetary value or because I couldn't replace it, but just because of this copy. This copy holds a lot of meaning. The same thing with this copy of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This is nothing special. This is just like a random Barnes & Noble edition that I had picked up. But I picked this up when I was in 10th grade. I So I would have been, what, 14 or 15? And you can see like it's all tabbed up and there's notes and stuff in here. And I actually did an entire like project on this book where I dissected this story and this is this is the copy that I read and did my project on and so this is just a book again that means a lot to me and I I don't I don't want to give it up and then the last one again is super corny but it is my three copies of Sarah Dessen it not all the same book but I just grabbed one of them it's this lullaby and two other ones but these were my favorite books as a teenager and these are actually the only books that I held on to from my teenage years, I unhauled almost everything when I moved to college because I just didn't have a place to put them. And my parents were converting my bedroom into an office. So I donated almost everything, like all, my entire book collection, except for a couple of these things. And so these are books that historically I've held on to when I've gotten rid of all of my books and I think I will always hold on to. Again, I have no idea if I would ever reread this, but this is a book like that I have dog-eared to absolute hell. And I just, I, I loved this book. This book was kind of like my first introduction into romance. So these are books that I don't think I could ever, I could ever unhaul. Question number eight is what's the best book or bookish thing you've ever been given? And like I was saying in the last question, I'm actually not really given many books. Um, so I don't have an answer for this. <laughs> I buy the majority of the books that I own. Like my parents will buy me stuff off my Amazon wish list. But usually around this time of year, I just stop buying books off of my own Amazon wish list and let them do it. So I don't have a good answer for this. Even like my e-readers, I just bought them myself. All of my bookish merch, I buy myself. Also, my husband and I don't, we're not gift exchangers at all. That is for both of us. I've talked about this in other videos, but for both of us, that is like the bottom of the barrel for our love language. So we're not, we're not gift givers or receivers. So we don't, we don't really exchange gifts for any holidays, birthdays, nothing. So I don't have an answer for this one. Question number nine is, what is a book that someone gave you that you wish you could give right back? Coming off of the last question, as I said, I'm not given very many books. And so these are actually, I feel really bad for this answer, but these are actually books that were sent to me. 
And I don't want to give these back because I'm mean and like don't want to keep them. But sometimes when publishers send you books and you don't like them, I feel so bad about not liking them that I wish I could send them back and be like, can you give this to somebody who like really wants and loves this book? Especially when you get like special signed editions. Like they sent me this really nice copy of Lake's Edge that had like a signed book plate and a fancy bookmark and all of this stuff. And I gave this book two stars. And I just feel so terrible about not loving this book. And I'm like, I wish this book had gone to somebody who loved this book and like would you know, treasure this because now I'm going to donate it and I feel awful. I feel awful about that. That's what I'm going with for question number nine. That was a really sad answer to question number nine. Question number 10 is name a book in which a character was given something meaningful. I had a hard time with this question finding that balance between something that wasn't super, super cheesy and something that wasn't like super meaningless. And this is, I don't even know if this quite fits the question, but we're going to roll with that. And it is Dear Emmy Blue by Leah Lewis. The heroine in this book writes a note and attaches it to a balloon and she releases the balloon into the world, hoping that somebody somewhere will read her message. And she is contacted by this family that is in a totally different country and they have found her balloon and her letter and they start a correspondence and she becomes very close with this family and I'm counting the balloon as something that somebody was given. She didn't necessarily give it to them but she released it out into the world and it it sparked it sparked this relationship and friendship and I absolutely adore this book and I will use any opportunity I can to talk about it because it needs it needs to be talked about more. This book is wonderful. There's an amazing found family. There is an amazing relationship in here. There is a lot of exploration of love and family and self-acceptance and it's beautiful. And I'm counting the balloon as something that was given. All right, so that is it for the giving tag. Definitely check out Elle's channel. It'll be linked down below as well as the charity that she linked. And I will have all of the questions and everything linked down below in the description box. So if you want to do this tag, consider yourself tagged and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.